Good morning, St. Luke's. We're looking at Psalm 77 this morning. And it continues the theme of remembering that we began to think about yesterday. Uh, the writer Asaph has obviously been spending a lot of time thinking back and looking back over the past. In verse 3, he writes in this psalm, I remembered you, O God, and I groaned. I mused and my spirit grew faint. This comes as the writer in the first two verses has cried out to God in distress. It's obvious that he is seeking the Lord, but something deep within him, uh, his soul indeed, refuses to be comforted. He is obviously in anguish and in turmoil. Now, it could be that this specific distress is caused by circumstances. But I wonder if also it might be the distress of spiritual dryness. Uh, the writer either desires God as a rescuer from a situation of difficulty uh, or seeks out an experiential and felt intimacy with God uh, that is currently lacking uh, in their situation and indeed within their soul. And so when they write that they refuse to be comforted, it could either be that the psalmist will not accept uh, you know, simple and ineffective answers to their current struggle. Uh, and often we are in a similar situation. We try and placate our spiritual difficulties uh, with trite and glib responses. Something like just let go and let God or wait and be patient. Uh, also, though, or alternatively would be a better explanation, it could be that the psalmist refuses to be comforted. And it could be a reflection of their stubborn heart. Uh, really, we've got to answer that uh, question for ourselves. Which of the or those two alternatives is most apt for us? Either way, the psalm remembers uh, previous occasions of delight and of singing. Uh, and the writer blames God for their current situation. Uh, indeed, actually, he accuses God of not being faithful. And indeed, it is as though the psalmist thinks that God has forgotten his own character. And so verses 7 to 9 are actually worth reading for us again this morning. Will the Lord reject forever? It says, will he never show his favour again? Has his unfailing love vanished forever? Has his promise failed for all time? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has he in anger withheld his compassion? The questions that the psalmist poses are both impudent and rude. However, they appear in the Psalms because they are entirely human. And I imagine that they are questions we have all wanted to throw at God at different points or to throw out in general. It's important to note that God does not strike uh, the psalmist down uh, as the one who declares these words. It's important to see also that they are phrased towards God himself. They are part of a spiritual wrestling. That is the vital discovery to see within the words as they are proclaimed. Remembering can be painful, particularly when the present does not hold up to positive past memories. From, Psal uh, sorry, from verse 10 onwards, the psalmist counsels themselves and encourages us to do likewise. He deliberately chooses in his state of turmoil to remember the deeds of God rather than to throw out questions to God. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will meditate on all your works and consider all your mighty deeds. The deliberate act of remembering draws the writer out of their current anxiety and distress. Again, this deliberate act of remembering sets them on a balanced course for the future. And their spiritual feelings uh, that at the moment uh, are not overflowing with joy and singing. That can be hard, can't it? Uh, but remembering sets us on a more get balanced course for the future. One commentator uh, titles their book on the Psalms overall as slogging along in paths of righteousness. The path of the Christian life can at times be a slog. Uh, so as we trudge through the mud, what will we be thinking about? Well, the psalmist remembers the works of God and specifically his acts of power and might towards his people through the Exodus. He refers to holding back the waters of the Red Sea, leading them through the desert by cloud and by fire, tending them like a shepherd over his flock. 
as Christians, our deliberate act of remembering is towards the work of Jesus Christ, his incarnation, uh, his works of power and his words of wisdom and authority. Above all, his atoning death and resurrection. These are the deeds by which he rescues us. And then the gift of his spirit, the means by which he shepherds us onwards. So let us remember this day. Let us remember what God has done in the past in order that it would overcome any distress in the present. Because we know that God will act for our futures. And when it doesn't feel that way, we can actively remember and our souls can be, can be comforted and set a course for the future. Let me pray for us all this day, St Luke's. Loving Heavenly Father, when we are distressed and our hearts do not sing for joy, when we are spiritually dry or there are situations of difficulty, let us remember you, remember your power and your might, your mighty deeds, your works of goodness towards us. Let us remember the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the gift of your spirit so that uh, we can be set forward with hope and confidence. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.